All right, sup, what's up, everybody? Uh, it's Lloyd from the Gray Sentinels. Uh, this particular video is going to be one of my first ones. Um, in the next video, I will be talking pretty much about the results of this video. Uh, so this is only the React video of the September dev update for the Ranger basic archetype. Uh, but other than that, um, I'll see you in this one and hopefully the next one, but uh, let's go ahead and cut to the video. All right, now that we've got that cringe out of the way, let's go watch the range basic weapon attack update. Welcome to another live stream day with an awesome showcase of our basic ranged combat revamp. Um, excited to be here again, showing you guys Ashes of Creation and its current progress towards Alpha 2. I have joining me today two stellar senior designers on our team, senior designer Trad and Jeremy. How are you guys doing? doing well i'm um, just looking forward to showing some of the stuff we've been working on here oh i know it's always exciting jeremy how you doing buddy doing really good really excited to be here really excited to show the stuff we've. by the way this, this is my second yes. time watching this and video I, uh, so i'm going first, back in and listening my first in awe missed uh, is of course the world edited in just the un what is the, this mode with the reticle and stuff Dude, it's just ranger looks so fun right now guys oh it is you've only seen three abilities i'm so I let me that's all i need show I, that. tell me a little bit about what airstrike does airstrike does a lot of things oh uh, what the oh, my unbelievably beautiful environments that uh the environment team and the design team have just come up with with these ruins and this forest i mean where where are we at right now jeremy we are in the riverlands and which was the former heart of the alien empire Ooh. so we're among their ruins from a long time ago after the fall yeah and people saw some of these things um in the weather and seasons um mm -hmm. showcase yep. Uh, so you guys might recognize this stuff, but the Aelin Empire, that was one of the largest, if not the largest empire at the town, the time of the apocalypse, right? Right. It was at the height of their golden age when the uh, the fall happened. So we are just standing in their ruins now. And it is it is so cool. I always love environments where you have these ancient almost artifacts and and just locations that you get to explore um it's and really compelling goals, yeah is to to make a living breathing world that's an actual character of our game vera should very much feel like a, a character that has so much history and story behind it uh they're like great fantasy worlds of the, uh, the past and other franchises vera should very much feel like one of those that just hearing the name invokes all kinds of history yes. and character and and living breathing and and actually a world that's been in trouble for a long time now and the, the players are coming back to help oh, rescue I, and recover I, that i love it and i also love the fact that chris atkins threw in some slits for this elf's ears <laughs> to come through oh my gosh that's so awesome yeah, so not only did they make the ears come through with holes, which is because of the no clipping thing, uh, so they've solved that with uh, something that makes it look natural, but also the cape and the hood is something MMOs never get right, which is something that I absolutely love. So I can't wait to see more capes and hoods. Awesome. I feel a lot comfortable. <laughs> You're able to poke Adorable. through. Adorable. <laughs> they are adorable. <laughs> this is such a great outfit. Um, I'm loving the, the cape cloth as well. It's very mm -hmm. cool. So you were mentioning we are in an area that is uh, relatively dangerous, right? This is um, mm -hmm. these aren't elite monsters, right? But they are still deadly. 
these are looks like a minotaur uh, hunting party war party that are investigating this area for some reason it looks like some shaman have have come down to this riverland area and they're, oh. they're checking things out and they have some like guard dogs with them they've got some drudgers with them um kind of like reptilian dog kind of things that are acting as lookouts and guards while they're looking around for things oh no oh i'm walking accidentally I'm like, oh, pulling gosh. a mob in walking mode oh no 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 oh, he pulls no, another one. Oh, oh, three oh no I, a few uh, of them. hold on one second Chad, what should I do? What should I? What what what, what items uh, or uh, abilities? Uh, spam two on one of them. Take that guy down. So one thing that I noticed uh, in the video um, <clears throat> is while he's in tab combat, the actual like he shoots an arrow, and we're gonna see if it hits this back of Minotaur because uh, it's supposed to be projectile. But if he's in tab combat and it automatically hits that target. Um, or if it gets body blocked by another Minotaur. I want to see that. All right, that was a quick shot right there. Um, so quick shot is an ability that has three charges, um, and each shot does more damage than the last two. Right here. Target that you're attacking. So you can kind of use it as an opener. Looks like it goes through the Warhorn, but it, oh, no. it hits. Drop somebody. Back. Do I have that two back again, the quick shot? Yep. Yeah, we haven't done like, Woo! you know, full cooldown pass on this or anything, so you can pretty much just spam right now, but... You got that oh, that guy pushed me Oh god, I have 16 health! Uh, no, no, no! No! The, the shaman are not something to mess with. They're, they've got that charge. How did we draw? So how did I grab so many? Beautiful play style of a ranger where you have to actually watch your surroundings while you fight and fight backwards. Surrounding. I did not. I was not aware of my surroundings. Okay, you guys may notice that I'm not dying right now. And I would just like to comment that the stream would not be good if I died trying to fight these things. What am I using here, Trap? Uh, that will be Snipe. Um, so unlike Quick Shot, that is an ability that you can press and hold, and it kind of roots you in place, so it's you, you got to... You gotta like use that at the right time, but you gotta you do get a lot of payoff if you can pull off the whole thing. Um, so the, the longer that you charge it, uh, the more damage it does. I need to get my some of my health back. I I, I apologize, stream. <laughs> I let me just say that whenever we do these recordings and I uh, am piloting, right? I have this very the one thing well I'm noticing with uh, about this how whole thing go, is and. <laughs> Somehow, There's very little cooldowns, and I don't know if that's hacks that or if that's the actual cooldowns. We don't actually know why. the numbers. Like Tyson says, so has a plan to their punch speculating the on right. number yeah, cooldown no, and all that stuff is kind no of plan like, survives contact with the um, enemy. Um, but uh, out of, out so of I, I didn't. I turned on this cheat code, which doesn't let me die if I fall like below one hit point. So every time you see me drop to one hit point, know that I would have normally just definitely have to be like alpha two testing, and then also like you know take a shot of the actual testing of it to see if it's good or for the minute power or if they need more or less numbers. Okay, so by the way, you guys are seeing this is early morning here on the the Varen Riverlands, and. You'll see that there's a lot of weather effects that are happening right here. There's some, there's some pollen because we're in the middle of spring, but it's also early morning, so we have this fog layer that's rolling through. Um, of course, the aesthetics of Ashes of Creation are very important. We've always said that uh, game systems makes games fun, um, and uh, the game environment and the aesthetics make it uh, make it beautiful and make it immersive so i think that one thing that you can say somebody brought this up in chat is that the quality of the art is extremely good but the art is lacking a distinctive type of uh like style like for example you can look at something from world of warcraft and you know it's from world of warcraft because of the style you can look at something from final fantasy and you can tell it's final fantasy because of the style you can probably even do the same thing to lost ark to a lesser extent and i do think that having a game have a certain kind of stylizing probably does make it a little bit more special to people but i think also that's something that could be refined over time as well yeah, it's yeah, it's having a certain type of uh, aesthetic to the old, of the of the whole game. I think WoW does it really, really well.
for the Minotaur. <laughs> okay, so uh, by the way, you guys are seeing this is early morning. I don't think here. it needs style. Yeah, the, this looks really it just needs to look fucking good. Um, and like <laughs> you'll see that there's a needs lot to look of good and play good. that are happening right here. There's some. I like this. There's some pollen because we're in the middle of spring, but it's. It is a fantasy game. It just needs to look fantasy. That, uh, game systems make so. Um, we double down on both of those. But, Jeremy, talk to me a little bit about these Minotaurs. Who are these Minotaurs? Why are they here? So these Minotaurs, well, prior to the fall, they were kind of uh, just a nomadic, chaotic race. They're a race that really benefited when the, the player races left San or left for Sanctus. <laughs> So oh, they, the in down. the intervening time, they've gotten stronger. They've kind of found some techniques, some help in some ways from other entities that aren't friendly. So they've they've really uh, got organized, got um, equipped, and they're kind of actually excited to see the players come back because they want some revenge. So yeah, they are they're... looking for ways to. Uh, I love that. Lore they have oral histories and things that dynamic tell race that inhabits that, the um, world held them down and and hunted them and they're uh, they're brutally wanting to exact that revenge. Can I? Um, I'm going to cheat here again because I just want to get go up to them and give people a look at, at what these minotaurs look like in the game. Mm -hmm. So, so the Terragor is one of those clan clans or tribes. Uh, this one's the. The rain caller who uh, has uh, essence that kind of evokes water. He has uh, water abilities, throws water. One of my guild members pointed out that um, there might be like corruption or some sort of scarring or something that's on these minotaurs. You can see it on like part of like the anterior side of like the biceps um, and like his shoulders. Uh, right above his bandages. So if you look closely, I can't tell if that's corruption or if that's like scarring or tattoos, but that's also another uh, really interesting thing that they've added to the model. Attacks and makes shields of, of water bubbles around them. Um, this guy is amazing. Oh, I love yeah. the model work. <laughs> and the Eli's done an amazing job on these. And, oh, and these are just cool. a shaman. These are kind of the ones that are uh, kind of right there on like the the outside of his arm if you can see all that uh corruption divine and have the flash little bit of a connection there there's much bigger ones much more even scarier ones like the marauders and the the berserkers and even the con which we've who seen they, the, who, oh wow look at that i'm sorry i'm just looking over in the distance and, and i see this this giant like tower minotaurs. structure yeah, that's the the Tower of Carfin under a curse that is causing a lot of problems for the area too. Oh, you're right. Actually, I think if we approach up here, we actually cross over into the boundary of Carfin, the wreckage of Carfin, right? It's like science. Correct. Yeah. Somewhere over here. And Carfin was a one of the great cities of the Aelin Empire, and it's now in in ruin. Ooh, there we go. Yes. Oh. All right. And another uh, thing, MMOs very rarely tread this. And I don't know if this is an Unreal Engine 5 thing or if it's just because nobody had the in ingenuity to think about this, but a vertical dungeon in the world. Uh, I know there's like Lost Ark and stuff, and there's a few other uh, things that have like vertical dungeons, but this is open world. And most of those are instanced, uh, like kind of towers and stuff like that. So. I think this is really, really cool that um, you get like an actual open world vertical dungeon, which is almost unthought of. And it also invokes like you only have like what, 1200 square kilometers in the entire map. So you have just extra land just going vertical. So like. The world is going to be bigger than just its breadth. I see it. That, my friends, that you're seeing off in the distance is going to is in Alpha Two, obviously. <laughs> um, and Jeremy, tell us a little bit about the tower and its and what you know, just a little bit, not nothing, give okay. away too much, but just a little sure. bit about the tower. What is it? What is the tower it, from a player? It was a focus of the the mages and study of the Alien Empire. 
Carfin was a city that that kind of had a, a great mage population, so it had a university there, um, and things went bad there during during the last days of the the fall. Um, they made some desperate measures in a really awesome uh, quest series that um, that Scott's written up and and implemented and things. Awesome. So it's 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 going to be a pretty fun tower that oh, yeah. is uh, intended for many groups to mm-hmm. exist within and fight. You have to wonder now, if Trad, those majors are part question. of the reason why they had portals out of Vera. What type Sanctus. of weapon am I using? Thank you. What type of weapon am I using here? This would be the longbow. Um, so you can kind of tell, like when you're when you're shooting your basic attack, that the shots are a little bit slower, but have more power behind them. Um, yeah, I really like the model that Atkins threw together for this. Oh, it looks um, so good. Looks like it's of an Empyrean design. So yes. one of the very Empyrean bow makers of the I do not past. see any hair Maybe underneath the hood. the techniques to make it. So I wonder okay, it how so hair good. interacts with it. It probably just so makes now, the character bald of this particular like, asset. Go ahead and, uh, and hold the button down. One thing that we're playing around with this that we haven't done with our melee weapons is it has a contextual behavior based on if you're tapping the um just you know pressing the the button versus holding it um so kind of like snipe you know you can actually hold these attacks and instead of doing just a rapid I'm, fire I'm sorry just have... trad one second something sure. happened these like these little birds just spawned right near me and they're like eating on the ground if i move will they move i hope so <laughs> i hope so it's me every time okay let's see let's find out birds how are you just going to sit here and let me run around you? You are not a threat. What, what are they doing? They're just kind of, they're eating, I guess. Oh, no. Okay, wait, what do you want me to do this weapon? Even spatial awareness is um, not old, keen old, 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 when it comes to monsters. And charge up an attack. Uh, Houston, we might have a problem. All right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, get your shots of water ready. We may be uh, in a little early. I'm so sorry. Let me see if I can... Don't worry, you have gotten there. Perfect. Oh, I know, it's true, it's true. I just don't want to... Give the Minotaur another problem. Oh. Charged you. Yep. Whoa, what was that? Did he charge me? He got you. It's hitting you with those water bolts. Oh, that's kind of cool. So I can jump while shooting this. So he's in tab. And I noticed that the arrow actually now hit the tree. It did not hit Nobody the look at uh, look Minotaur at there. Head. So that's pretty interesting. What are they it like on? interacts with the terrain in uh, tap combat, but I didn't their, notice their it. In, casting this water bolt that's really hard in like, water that's uh, against just creatures. slamming into you for force damage oh. that uh, hits. Yeah. That's kind of cool. All right, Trad, I apologize. I am now going to appropriately engage from the... <laughs> correct get, get the jump on them positions okay so something cool about the longbow <clears throat> oh now they fly away look at that the birds are flying something cool about the longbow is that as opposed to the short bow you are able to actually hold and charge each of the basic attacks is that correct yep and doing so what does that do for the weapon user uh, currently, it's just a damage increase, but you know, some we can do all sorts of things with this later. Like, um, somebody was saying that the noise, like the audio of pulling the string back, was annoying. But honestly, as uh, a player, it's really good feedback to have an audio cue on how charged is this attack in the moment. So, although you would think that it gets annoying. It's actually really, really helpful, uh, especially for like PvP or even just PvE, where you're realizing how charged is this attack. Uh, the thing that I can um, parallel it to is like Scion Q in League of Legends, where he like charges it up and like uh, the Shy, I think, he like bobs his head to the audio of the Scion Q to know how close and how far away it is. Uh, from like being able to knock somebody up. Uh, same goes for like knowing how much attack damage modifier you're going to have on your longbow charge. You know, if you're charging it up longer, then you can set up some kind of status effect combo. There's all kinds of things that we can do with it. But yeah, right now, 
Hit the tree um, again. Just increases the damage. And so, for example, one thing you could do is you could do two basic shots and then charge the final shot, and that would give you like a big spike of damage there at the end. So, oh, that's each cool. Be charged individually. Wow, that's pretty cool. And now we have some abilities that we talked about. These are from the Ranger archetype. Of course, we're not going to show everything that the Ranger has, but we are going to give you guys some ideas of the abilities in its kit. Um, what is this first ability called? This is Snipe? Yeah, this is Snipe. Um, this is the one I was talking about earlier where it's kind of like the basic attack, but a lot more powerful. Um, Even without all this animation, just the animation of him crouching is really good for PvE or PvP, sorry, uh, where you it's a uh, subtle, not very animatic. If that's a word. Uh, and it distinguishes what type of ability is about to go off for you to react. So really, really good on the animations portion. And then um, as snipe is like a long range ability, the extra glowy and everything like that um, avoids rangers from like being able to do like camouflage, like ganking type thing. Um, you can hold this, or it allows them to react you see that during those flash weapons. There at the end, that indicates that it's fully charged. Um, That's a strong can, ability. Yeah, you can keep holding it in case you want to like you know wait for the target to get low before you you know bring them down if they're getting healed. All, all kinds of things that you can do. But, actually, uh, just subtle point, enough to only be able to see it the last moment, which is actually. Oh, that's really cool. cool. The fact that monsters are regenerating like health horn. is also really, really cool. That's a Warhorn. That's not now actually the... a Shaman. That's regenerating what happens? health through, like, Let's water magic. So that's also pretty interesting. That, like, it's like a fighter slash cleric type thing. Let's see if I can find a couple more. Because I know there's another ability we have or called Or cleric augmentation, if you will. Cool. Let's see. Yeah, really cool. So now let's say, for example, as a ranger, I have these creatures and this melee guy is on me and I want to reposition. Tell me a little bit about what airstrike does. Airstrike does a lot of things. Um, it's so the badass character every time in the I see direction it. that you're facing um, and it rains three projectiles down in the path that you're going. Um, and each of those projectiles does damage and AOE and also the targets. So you could think of this more as like not quite an ultimate ability, but it's it's definitely up there. I just yeah, imagine seeing rangers so like this in the middle of a siege rad. battle, just I flying love through the air over it. tanks. You can see its yeah. general nature essence to cause roots to come up and bind to grab the minotaur and hold them. And now this yeah. quick shot ability, by the way, that. Um, I see it, ha it has a debuff that looks like the quick shot icon on the target. What's that doing? Uh, that so basically each shot of quick shot will increase the damage of the next application of that specific attack against the against the target. So it kind of encourages to unload all three of your charges for a big spike of burst damage, but that does come at the cost of each charge comes back individually. So you either have to wait a longer period of time to get that burst. Um, or you can just kind of weave them in here and there if you want more readily available damage. Got it. That's uh, cool. What I think would be really good, uh, I think it's really good that they did that, because I think if I'm playing a ranger and I'm like able to do like sustained damage and I'm not worried about just like three quick successive shots on like a target that's trying to get away, um, you do the quick shot or you do an auto attack Quick shot, auto attack, quick shot, auto attack, quick shot, and then you're literally weaving in damage and also making it come out successive. And it almost feels as if you're doing like an automatic, uh, auto animation cancel. Animation cancel? Did I say that? That's what I meant. So I have here now a reticle on my screen. So we've switched from tab target mode which is a point and click with the cursor or using tab to cycle targets based on proximity priority, right? And into this <clears throat> reticle-based mode, which now you can see the targeting plate in the top is slightly grayed out. And we do that to demonstrate that that is a soft lock target versus a hard lock target. 
And what a soft lock target is, Trad, do you want to explain a little bit about that? Sure, yeah. So if you if you are in action mode and you don't have a target actually selected like you would in a tab target game, um, then it'll just smartly choose whatever target it thinks is the most appropriate for where your camera is and attack that target. Um, but if you were to actually select a target, I think, it, is it right mouse button in action mode? Right. Right now, it's of course, all this stuff is customizable by the user. But if you press the, the right mouse button in action mode, it will hard lock the target, which means you can take your reticle off the target and it won't change. Correct, Trent? And it looks like he can shoot because right. the reticle is still awesome. red while he's looking away from it. Now we have so another type of ranged combat. weapon. As you can show. Which I think is amazing. Oh, and I can still, while in action mode, I can still tab to cycle targets as well. This is probably the best because yeah, as a really ranger to, or like uh, a ranged sure combat is. class, I tend to think tab combat is better, but action combat is more fun. And being able to hard lock on a target that you see that you in like action mode and treat it as tab combat is superior by far for any ranged class. So the fact that you can do this and that they thought about it and that they made it happen, huge kudos. A more tab based combat here because we in the last live stream, um, all of our melee attacks were they were more hitboxes, right? They didn't acquire a hard target. Um, and so we wanted to show a little bit more of that in this stream. And so, you know, right right here, for example, like the target, um, you're not having to aim your medical or anything like that. It's more what you, uh, in line with what you expect. Right? That kind of was an action combat game. mode. Um, but at the same time, we still have abilities like airstrike and, you know, other things that we're, we haven't even shown yet that are going to be more action oriented. So we can hopefully hit the sweet spot of having a nice combination of all that. And it's more, more fun. I've played Rangers in EQ, EQ2, the great archer types in, in Guild Wars, and Hunters, and WoW. And when it's this mode with the reticle and stuff, it's just fun. With short around bow, which is pretty guys. cool. Oh, it is super fun. And I've switched over to the short bow now. So let me see if I can show off that short bow into a good light one second um i'll exit this mode there we go so now i have a short bow equipped versus the <coughs> excuse me versus the long bow and talk to me a little bit about the difference in the short bow tread sure yeah the direction that we went with the short bow was a lot more i almost want to say acrobatic like you can use this a lot more freely uh, with the movement it doesn't slow you as much um it's it's a higher rate of fire uh, basically this is this is the more mobile feeling lightweight uh version of the longbow you know what? Um, so that's something i didn't check 213 um, you are trading you're, you're, you're making some trade-offs here right? um with I range and attack speed and I, I do think right, right now we're actually putting a higher crit rate on this one so it's got the first potential um, but these are just the kinds of decisions that we want the players to be making when they're selecting their weapon choice what, what do i value i love the the movement of that yeah i think i mean it is a very crit. different feeling right um one i'm much more mobile being able to shoot and not have to sacrifice a lot of my movement speed like i had to with the longbow so just from that aspect alone it feels like a very different weapon i'm also not able to charge i'm just kind of i'm holding down the attack and it's just firing a bunch you'll see that i can blind fire because i'm in action mode um that's why i'm like firing extra there but it is it feels very different um, and of course, it doesn't change the way you have access to your abilities. Your abilities are there regardless of the, the type of ranged weapon necessarily you're using. Um, <clears throat> short bow or long bow. Um, and then I don't have I to have a hard missed, target lock also for like now for the <laughs> abilities either. I, they tie off of the reticle. And I know there's some feedback that we wanted to collect from players with regards to this demonstration. You want to talk a little bit about that, Trent? Yeah, um, uh, as always, every time we make an ability, we're, we're pretty much always thinking about what is what is the right balance between um, restricting player movement for the sake of, of 
weight, um, you know, getting getting the feeling of the weight and that, that being able to animate the full body, um, all the good things that come along with, you know, um, restricting movement. But at the same time, uh, we definitely don't want to be a game that makes it frustrating to, you know, attack and move at the same time. And a lot of people, you know, what, what I think a lot, a lot of people love in MMOs is, is the feeling of agency and freedom in combat, and we want to um, retain that. So uh, just as you see these abilities go off and uh, you know, get used in this environment, like, just, I guess we appreciate any feedback on how that direction is going. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and sure. also from the enemy side, as, and asking on behalf of like Doug's encounter group, it's how fast are it's is the combat playing? Um, is it too slow? Is it too fast? Does it feel good? Um, the time to kill or what? What you're seeing right now, or is it uh, what what players are liking? Do people right. like? And and keeping in mind, these are are solo ones right now. These are. Uh, tune more for solo fighting. Um, these aren't elite group mobs, but for one-on-one -on -one type of fights. Yeah, I like um, in the solo areas. You know, this for me, this speed feels pretty good, uh, given that I'm a you know DPS oh, class, you and these guys are particularly susceptible to rangers because like the, the they, are, just... um, they are they uh, are mage class NPCs. Uh, but, you know, getting your guys' opinion on those things. Also, the differences between the weapon types, right? We talked a little bit about the longbow. We talked a little bit about the shortbow. Um, you know, being able to kind of uh, give us feedback on how you feel the direction uh, has gone now. Uh, is this the type of ranged combat you're looking for? Those of you out there, especially who are bow users and enjoy these classes, you know, Depending what is it how about far the games that you have played damage, that you felt had okay. good uh, range Purple, combat uh, in it? Yeah. And are you seeing elements of that demonstrated in this type of combat as well? Um, I can tell you that obviously seeing is, is one thing. Um, in Alpha 2, uh, those of you who have access will be able to give us kind of your feel feedback. Um, and, uh, you know, of course, that's not under NDA, so all of us get to watch and participate in Alpha 2 um, through uh, through watching others play it and, and getting their feedback and experiences as well. Um, <clears throat> another thing that I think is, is pretty cool that I wanted to talk about, actually, um, was these uh, weapons and the types of um, uh, skill trees that they have associated with them. Try do you want to talk to I'm us noticing about as he aims for the head, he's actually getting higher crits, or like he's critting more. So I think in action combat, as you hit the head or some other vulnerable spot on the creature, you actually get critical hits. So that's pretty interesting to note. You know, how it these skill trees chance. interact with the weapon? For sure, yeah. Um, part of the plan with each of these weapons is they'll each have a unique skill tree associated with them um, to differentiate them not only in terms of feel, but also in terms of mechanics. And uh, a, an important thing that we really want to capture in Ashes is is the, for the ability um, uh, basically so the player can build their character you know how, how they want and that extends beyond just their class choice right um so for example if i'm the ranger i can spec into my short bow or i can spec into my long bow and those will be two different very different builds um for example the short bow may specialize or have have a part of its tree that specializes in applying bleeds and bleeds might synergize with specific ranger abilities that you know, the longbow um, might not necessarily synergize with. So weapon choice will play into like what abilities and your, and your type you're specializing in. Um, there's just a lot that goes into it. And we're just we're starting to scratch the surface of that. And you would also want to take into account the enemies you're going up against, what areas you're going into, what enemies you're hunting, and is it a player versus a, a monster? Players will be, you know, behave very differently and is a long bow getting the drop on them important? Can, are you spec for short bow for being dodgy and moving around them? You got all those things to keep in mind. Absolutely. 
Well, guys, appreciate you joining us today to talk about this stuff. It is amazing that the, the world you guys are building, the, the mechanics here. I hope everyone in the audience has enjoyed the demonstration. Uh, talk to us. Give us your feedback. Tell us what you liked about it, uh, what you would like to see changed. Uh, make sure you do so on the YouTube video and Twitch, on Reddit, on our forums, everywhere you possibly can. It means so much to us to be able to kind of reflect on what the community has to say about the works in progress we're showing you towards Alpha 2. Um, Jeremy, Trad, thank you very much for joining. It is always appreciated. Hearts in chat. Uh, these guys are doing heart. awesome. Yes, for far. <laughs> these guys are doing awesome, uh, awesome work. And I'm, I'm loving the progress and I'm loving sharing with you guys. I know you and everyone else on the team who make these streams possible enjoys it. And with that said, everyone, we will see you back on stream.